Object tracking in DaVinci Resolve Studio 18 is finally here. That means you can now select and track things in a jiffy and apply some selective color grading, some fun effects, or even mask things out. And it is very impressive, but it is limited to the paid studio version of DaVinci Resolve. It's not available within the free version. And that's because it's using the DaVinci Neural Engine, which leads me nicely into this video's sponsor, NVIDIA Studio and Scan Computers. NVIDIA Studio is a new software and hardware platform you utilizing technology to make creative work easier and more efficient. RTX Studio High Performance Systems are loaded with the world's most powerful NVIDIA GeForce RTX GPUs. And it's those GPUs which not only drastically improve timeline and rendering performance, but also accelerate that DaVinci neural engine, ensuring that you can run all of the brand new DaVinci Resolve 18 effects like the depth map, surface tracker, and of course, object tracking within Magic Masks, effortlessly. And Scan Computers are one of the biggest and most trusted resellers of NVIDIA Studio certified products in Europe. So click the link below to check out their line of NVIDIA Studio certified laptops, plus their own line of award-winning 3XS NVIDIA Studio approved custom systems built specifically for creators. One of which I'm actually using right now. This is my very own Scan 3XS system rocking the NVIDIA 3090 and I'm going to be using it to edit and record this entire video. Right, with all that out of the way, Magic Masks is really, really clever, but there are a few do's and don'ts when using it to make sure that you're using it correctly and you get the best results. Rather than me running through everything, instead open up DaVinci Resolve, go to Help, and you've got the DaVinci Resolve Reference Manual. Give that a click, jump directly to page 2934, and there's a whole section on Magic Masks. We've got loads of do's and don'ts, how to deal with hair, and even a whole section just about hats. So we're going to start with this super duper easy example. We've just got this cat chilling on the wall and we want to give him a little track. So we're going to give this footage a click and then hop into the color page. Now to open your magic mask controls on the little menu right in the middle of the screen here you want to come over to this icon the little person with the checkerboard behind it to open up your magic mask. Now it will default to the magic mask object controls. If you're tracking a person you'll want to use the person controls instead over to the right, you've got these two little icons. The one on the right is a person tracking, so you get your person options. The one on the left is for object tracking, which is the one we're gonna use for this example. Now, the first thing you want to do, use your playhead to find what's called your reference frame. So you need to pick the point where your subject is really nice and clear, isn't being obstructed by anything, because this is the point where we're gonna tell DaVinci Resolve the thing we want it to track. So I'm just gonna use this frame here. That will do, this is a nice simple one. Now, again, in your Magic Mask controls, make sure you've got this little ink dropper with a plus selected, and then you just need to draw a line on your subject. You can do a little line, or you can squiggle and try and select loads of it, like so, and release, and it'll pick up your subject. So just like that, it's picked up the cat, like so. Now, if you don't see this overlay, there's a toggle mask overlay down here in the Magic Mask controls. So if I was just to tick that, that would turn it off, and we get no red highlighting. Turn it back on and we get our red highlight like so. Now, just to the left of that, while we're here, we've got an invert mask. So if you wanted the opposite to be selected, we could just toggle that. So now everything but our cat is selected or we revert it back. And now our cat is selected and everything else isn't. Now you can do as many lines as you need to. So that's done a really good job of picking up our cat, but you can actually see a little bit of the tail down here has been missed. So still with our dropper with the plus selected, we're just going to do this little line on the little tail here to get that picked up. But I actually went slightly too far and it's added some more down here. So what you can then do, you can either use the dropper with the little minus icon, so you give that a click, or what I prefer to do with the dropper with the plus, just hold the Alt key and you'll see on your preview that the dropper will now have a little minus sign. I'm just going to do some squiggles down here. The lines will be red and we're just telling DaVinci Resolve that I don't want those things highlighted. We'll do another one down here, and there we go. So the cat with our little tail, we don't want any of this wall, and we're good to go. Now, before we start tracking, there's one last thing. You've got this quality, and you've got faster, and then you've got better. And it does exactly what you'd expect. Faster will give you a faster but less accurate mask and track, whereas better will take longer, but will generally give you better results. I'm gonna leave this as faster for this example. And then we just need to do our tracking. So that's where these tracking controls come in. And the main three that you're going to use, you've got this little play icon here to play forwards. You've got this little back icon to play backwards. And then you've got this left and right arrow to play forwards 
and backwards. So my reference frame is right here in the middle. So this is the exact point where we've selected everything. If I was to move my playhead, we would actually come off that reference frame. If you need to get back to it, you just use this little icon right here to go to the reference frame, and that will take you back to where you did your little squiggles. Now mine is right in the middle of my playhead, so I need to track forwards and backwards. So we're just gonna use the little forwards and backwards icon, and DaVinci Resolve will do the rest. It's tracking the cat forwards of my reference frame, and once it's done that, it will then go back and track backwards of the reference frame to make sure the entire timeline is covered. And as you can see, done a pretty good job of tracking our cat like so. Now once that's done, there are some matte finesse controls down here where you can add some blur to the mask, you can clean up the black and the white. For reference, black is referring to everything that isn't selected, so in my case the background, whereas white is referring to the subject. So you can just use these controls to tidy up the mask as you need to. So I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm gonna turn off my overlay, and then I can start to do whatever I want to this mask. So I'm just gonna come over to my primary wheels, and if we just move our offset, we can just change the color of our cat to get our cat whatever color we want. Let's actually get rid of that, because we don't wanna change the color of the cat, but something slightly more realistic. I'm gonna bring him up with the offset, lower the shadows a bit, so he's just a little bit brighter, hit play, and we've just really quickly changed the exposure of our cat without changing anything else. I want a blue cat, I've got a blue cat, job done. Now in this example, we've got a dude on a bike, which is a much more complicated mask. And I just wanna show you really quickly how you use the strokes to isolate exactly what you want. So we're gonna come down to our magic masks. I'm gonna keep it as faster. We're gonna find our reference frame. This actually zooms into our bike at the end. So obviously we're not gonna use this. We're gonna use a point where we've got a really good shot of the bike. So I'm gonna go with something like this. And I'm just gonna first select a bit of the bike like so, and it's just gonna select the front half like this. We then need to select the front sort of fender, the suspension, the wheels, the brakes, everything else. Same on the rear, and then the back of the bike as well. So we're just gonna pick up all these points like so. Now, we're missing the handlebars, so we're gonna grab those, and something like that. So we've just done a few little strokes like so. Now it's picked up some random points in the road. So first things first, I'm gonna hold Alt, so I'm on my minor stropper, get rid of those because we don't want them. It's picked up some bits of his shirt, so we'll get rid of that. And it's picked up his shoes, so we're just gonna get rid of those. And you just go through and you tidy up the mask, getting it looking exactly as you want it. Selected the glove, so we're gonna get rid of that and try and get it roughly looking like so. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now what I'm gonna do is just apply it backwards and it's gonna track just the things that we selected. You can see clearly here, the, the guy's leg hasn't been done. We can play this forwards as well, and as it zooms in, it's tracking the bike until it goes out of frame, and then we've just got our guy. So I'm just gonna turn off my toggle, and again, we could come here, and we could mess with our exposure, we could change the color, we could do whatever we want, increase the contrast, do any sort of grading we wanted, purely on the bike, rather than everything else. Now you can also apply effects. So I'm just gonna open up my effects library. Let's just grab the mosaic blur so we can mosaic blur out the bike. We're gonna drop that on the node and now we've got our mosaic bike like so, but the driver is looking pretty good. Now sometimes you will need to make amendments to your mask either before or after your reference frame. So this here is my reference frame because the car was nice and clear. But as we go backwards at the very beginning, you can see it is obscured by this car here. And what actually happens, if we zoom in a little bit, you can see a little bit of the mask is starting to come onto this car in front. So we just need to tidy that up. So what we're gonna do, just move my playhead to the very point where it starts to appear on this other car. So it's right there and then right there. So anything to the left of that, we've got a mask, but right there, this car in front is perfectly clear. Now we're gonna use our negative tool, or I'm just gonna hold Alt on my keyboard and drag just to tell Resolve not to touch any of this bit here, like so. Now in my magic masks, our little blue bar, to the left of where my playhead is, there's now no blue bar. And that's telling us we need to just retrack that section. So I'm not gonna hit track forwards and back because everything after this point is absolutely fine. We just need to track this backwards. So I'm gonna hit my play backwards button. That's just gonna play backwards. It's gonna mask our car, but it's making sure not to select any of this one. So now if we hit play, it's not coming onto this car in front at all. It's just masking our car behind perfectly like so.
Easy peasy. Now you can actually use the multiple strokes to track multiple things within the same frame as well. Now this example I'm gonna show you is a little bit crazy, so let's hop straight into it. So I've got this footage, it's of this skier, and then he goes down to this helicopter down here. I'm gonna do this essentially wrong. What you should do is find your reference point. So find a point where they're both nicely in shot. So I'd probably go with something like this, but instead I went with this. So we've got a little bit of the helicopter here, and we've got the guy. So first things first, let's select our dude. So we're just gonna give him a little squiggle, select him like so. And then I'm also gonna select the helicopter, but it's only the side of it. So we're just gonna come on down here, give it a real rough draw in like so, and then release. Now straight away, something interesting has happened, and it's automatically picked up this helicopter blade. I didn't draw anything over here, but it's picked it up. Only half of it though, so we just need to fill in the rest, so I'm just gonna tell it like so. Now I'm happy with that, now we need to track this backwards. So we're gonna start tracking and something magic is gonna happen. It picks up the entire helicopter, all the blades, all the rotor, everything, and it keeps tracking it all the way up the mountain while also still tracking the skier as well. How ridiculous is that? This thing really is magic. And I've got one last super quick example for you all. And that's how to use an alpha output to use magic masks to put titles or whatever behind things like this. So we've got this footage of this lady pouring some coffee here. And I just wanna put something behind the mug and the coffee and the little flask. So let's give it a go. So the first thing I need to do, I'm gonna duplicate this footage. So I'm just gonna give it a click on my timeline, hold the Alt key, drag up two tracks so that we've got the footage, space, footage. Then I come down to this bottom one here, I'm gonna hit D on my keyboard just to disable it because we don't actually need it for now. Then I'm gonna grab a title or I could grab a PNG or an image, whatever, and we're gonna put this under here like so. We'll come back to it and amend it in a moment. Then we're gonna select our top footage and jump into our color page and we're gonna use our magic mask and we're gonna select our object. So first things first, our reference frame, anything here looks pretty good. So we're just gonna go, I want all of this arm and the flask. So we'll do that first. Make sure our overlay's on. It's already picked up the actual drink. It's done a really good job there actually. Then we're gonna select the mug as well and the hand. It's got the handle, but it's selected everything in the middle. So we're gonna hold alt, get rid of that and we'll go with something like that. We're gonna play this forwards and backwards to track and let's see how it does. So that looked like it tracked pretty well indeed and it didn't take very long at all. So now what we need to do is to add our alpha output so that we get rid of anything that isn't tracked. So first things first, I need to turn off my overlay. Then in my nose, just right click any empty space and come on down to the add alpha output and then you'll get the little blue dot in the bottom right hand corner. Then from your node, which has got your magic mask on it, click the little blue box, drag it to the blue circle, and there we go. That will just get rid of everything that wasn't part of our magic mask, which gives us this. Now, I'm not gonna mess around with my finesse tools too much, but I'm just gonna add a bit of a blur just to soften that edge, something like that. Then we're gonna jump back into the edit page. I'm gonna to toggle my background back on. This one doesn't have the actual magic mask. So we're gonna hit D on our keyboard just to turn this back on. So now basically our foreground is just the arm and the flask and the coffee. And then we've got our title and then we've got our background. So if I go to the title, I can make this as big as I like. Let's just call this coffee. And then if we hit play, it's not tracked or animated or anything, but you can see just how well of a job it's done at tracking this. The pour is perfectly going over the top of the coffee into the mug. Easy peasy. No time at all. Magic masks for the win. Now it was thanks to that NVIDIA 3090 GPU in my Scan 3XS system which allowed me to record this tutorial so quickly and so smoothly. So do check out Scan's lineup of NVIDIA Studio certified 3XS systems by clicking on the link down in the description below. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll catch you next time.